Monks are known for their patience and temperament, being able to subdue desire to find Nirvana. But damn we were getting impatient for some monk buffs. Luckily, they're finally here. 9.1 has kicked off and we're gonna give you a quick update on how to set up your character for Season 2. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skillcapped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Miss Weaver gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on how to heal, CC, use cooldowns, and exactly how to execute your playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcapped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server, where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. Hatch 9.1 introduced some key changes to Miss Weaver, helping them bounce back from their low tier status of Season 1. Some general changes involve moderate damage increases to offensive abilities. Although Miss Weaver isn't really known for its damage, these changes help put their damage more in line with some of the other healers in the lineup. But more importantly, the PvP talent system was completely reworked, including some major redesigns to existing options, like Eminence, which now allows your port to be used while stunned, helping cover one of the biggest weaknesses to the spec. New PvP talents were also added, including Peace Weaver, Dematerialize, and Thunderous Focus T. We will be covering all these talents in a later stage of the video. Video, so be sure to stick around. There weren't any major changes to racial abilities in 9.1 and your best options are still the same. For Alliance, Night Elf is by far your best choice and that is entirely due to Shadow Meld. This ratio is absolutely broken as a healer. You can use it to evade or even immune spell casts, and more importantly, it can be used to instantly drop combat to drink, something which is vital in Arena. Orc remains the best race for Horde due to the strength of hardiness into stun-based setups. Despite some buffs to your defensive PvP talents, one of your biggest weaknesses is dying in stuns. Having reduced stun duration dramatically increases your chance at surviving the setups from comps like RMP. With that out of the way, let's cover your best talents for PvP going into Season 2. For your first row of talents, Mistwrap remains your best choice due mostly to the fact that the other two options on this tier are dramatically undertuned. This talent will give you the highest throughput and is the easiest to use since it just modifies an existing ability instead of giving you a completely new one. Your choice on the next tier is a bit flexible with Chi Torpedo being a good general option. But if you're playing with a melee DPS like a warrior, you can get more value from Tiger's Lust since it can increase the mobility of your partners. As far as your third tier is concerned, Manatee is the best choice here since the other two options aren't really optimized for PvP. Manatee gives you an on-demand mana cooldown, allowing you to dump heals in high damage situations without worrying about your future resources. Ring of Peace is a good general talent on your fourth row since it can be used defensively to zone out enemy players or even offensively to interrupt spell casts. With that in mind, Song of Chi Ji can be chosen if your team lacks a disorient effect like Fear and you need the additional CC. This is usually the case in 2v2 where it can be chained together after Leg Sweep or Paralysis. Healing Elixir is another great general pick for your 5th tier since it is valuable in every single situation. But if you're playing against a spell cleave that will deal damage to you, then Diffuse Magic will usually be your better option since it provides stronger damage mitigation. Your 6th and 7th tiers never change in PvP, with Summon Jade Serpent Statue and Focus Thunder being your default picks in every matchup. The alternative choices on both of these tiers aren't well optimized for PvP, making these your default selections. 9.1 completely redesigned PvP talents for Miss Weaver, so let's break down what you should be using for Season 2. Almost every single PvP talent you have is entirely situational with the exception of Chrysalis and Zen Focus T, which are solid general picks in a wide variety of matchups. Zen Focus T is pretty much essential into Spell Cleave since it can be used to avoid ranged lockouts in high pressure situations. As far as general defensive choices are concerned, both the newly added Dematerialize and the reworked Eminence talents work really well in situations where you will be the kill target. Eminence takes priority as your defensive pick since it can be used as a defensive for yourself allowing you to port to safety while stunned or it can be used to avoid CC when teams chain stuns into casted spells like Polymorph. As far as melee specific defenses are concerned, Grapple Weapon is a solid choice into any comp with a melee DPS, especially into cleaves in 3v3. But if you need some caster specific counters, we highly recommend playing with a newly added Peace Weaver talent. This is a huge buff to one of your main defensive CDs, reducing the cooldown of revival while also giving you spell immunity for 2 seconds. This can be used to avoid the penalties that come from dispelling unstable affliction against warlocks or flame shock against elemental shaman teams. And one unique use of this ability is that it can even immune the damage 
damage from bursty spell casts like Chaos Bolt or The Hunt. Refreshing Breeze and Healing Sphere are two more caster-specific counters, with Refreshing Breeze giving you an additional magic dispel working well into mage teams for removing polymorphs, while Healing Sphere can be a niche pick into AoE damage spell cleaves like Shadow Play. Overall, every Miss Weaver PvP talent is really situational, and outside of Chrysalis and Zen Focus T, there aren't many default picks. You should swap talents in and out depending on your matchup and the needs of your specific comp. While there were some minor changes to some Covenant abilities in 9.1, your best choice for PvP is still Necrolord. As we've mentioned before, one of the biggest issues monks face in Arena is their fragility to stun-based comps, and Necrolord has some key defenses that help navigate that issue. Fleshcraft makes you much bulkier, especially for the first minute of every game since it can be precast in the starting room. On top of that, despite some nerfs in 9.1, Ooze's Frictionless Coding is a Necrolord exclusive passive, granting you a shield for 7.5% of your health whenever you drop below 50% HP. These two abilities together dramatically ramp up your passive defense and are essential for your success in competitive arena. The active ability for Necrolord is called Bone Dust Brew. It's not too exciting, but it simply buffs some of your healing when used, which you can't really complain about. As far as Soulbinds are concerned, Plague Divisor Merilith is far and above your best choice for arena. We've outlined your best Soulbind path here, but let's quickly cover each important step. First, we have the default Volatile Solvent, which you cannot change but is worth mentioning since it received a massive buff in 9.1, now causing you to gain 120 mastery for 2 minutes every time Fleshcraft is used. This is important because mastery is one of your best secondary stats, but more on that later. As we mentioned earlier, Ooze's Frictionless Coding is one of the main reasons Necrolord is your best Covenant, so this additional defensive proc should always be selected. Skipping ahead a bit, we have Ultimate Form, which empowers your Fleshcraft and gives you temporary CC immunity during and after its channel. Although Although it is a default choice, this ability is super important in PvP and can be used to immune important CC casts in order to deny enemy win conditions. Finally, we have the newly added Viscous Trail, which creates an AoE slow effect whenever you are snared by an opponent. This is an important pick because it gives you access to another endurance conduit while also buffing your ability to kite. The newly added end cap ability for this soulbind is called Kevin's Oozling. It honestly isn't that important, but it gives you some party-wide shields and a small damage buff whenever you use Bone Dust Brew. Now that your Soulbind has been selected, let's cover all the conduits you should be using for PvP. For Potency, Resplendent Mist is a must-pick since it dramatically increases the effect of your mastery and is the biggest throughput healing boost of all available conduits. Nourishing Chi and Bone Marrow Hops are your second best potency choices, with Nourishing Chi buffing one of your main defensive cooldowns while also acting as the spell protection since it's a magic buff. The newly added Condensed Atmosphere and the existing Fortifying Ingredients are your best endurance conduits. If you have to choose between the two, Fortifying Ingredients should be selected if you will be the kill target, since it grants you an on-demand absorption effect to help deny kill setups. Although finesse conduits aren't nearly as important, Lingering Numbness is your best choice giving you an additional snare effect to combo with your paralysis. If you look back at our original Soulbind tree, you can see where each conduit should be placed. The only choice you really have to make is on the 7th row, where you would select fortifying ingredients in matchups where you could be the kill target or Lingering Numbness if that is not the case. Gearing in 9.1 has changed slightly, with PvE becoming an optional but non-essential way to gear up. When choosing any gear, however, it is important to remember your stat priority, which is Intellect, followed by Versatility, Mastery, Haste, then Crit in that order. Mastery is much stronger than Haste and Crit, so most of your gearing should focus on upgrading pieces that give Intellect, Versatility, and Mastery increases. All PvP gear from Season 2 will scale up 13 item levels in instance PvP, making fully upgraded Conquest gear mostly best in slot. Upgrades will still require specific ratings and will use Honor in order to rank up, with the best PvP gear possible being 259 item level, which is unlocked after getting 2100 rating. You should always play with the Gladiator's Medallion Trinket since having the guaranteed CC break is crucial as a healer. Your secondary trinket choices are relatively flexible with the Alacrity and newly added Shackles Trinket being solid offensive picks so long as you aren't a kill target, in which case the Emblem Trinket would be a better option. There are some PvE exclusive gear which can be used in PvP but isn't mandatory for your success. Some pieces in the new Sanctum of Domination raid drop gear with special sockets for gems called Shards of Domination. These shards have special effects which are nerfed by 50% in PvP and can be put on very specific pieces from the new raid. While you certainly can benefit from this gear in PvP, it isn't mandatory for your success due to Conquest gear scaling up 13 item levels in arenas and RBGs. If you manage to get a piece socketed gear from the new raid, make sure it has versatility and mastery on it, otherwise it's probably not worth using. 
Don't be too concerned about this new PvE gear. If you manage to get it, great. If not, that's totally fine. Just make sure to cap conquest every week and loot your vault every Tuesday, getting your Season 2 weapon as early as possible. And we can't talk about gearing without mentioning legendaries. Your best pick for most situations is Sephus's Proclamation, due mostly to its reduced CC effect. This, along with the hardiness ratio of your orc, will ensure you have the shortest possible stun duration on yourself, making you much harder to kill. But if you are not worried about dying in stuns, then Crowded Focus is a better option. Simply put, this will give you the highest possible healing increase in PvP, making it optimal in high damage games where you will position in the backline and spam heal. And finally, let's go over some of the most important macros you should be using in Season 2 and beyond. Perhaps the most useful macro to have as any healer is a Dispel Party 1 and 2, which you can create two separate binds for using the commands we have here. This will allow you to quickly remove magic effects from your partners without needing to target them. You can also do the same for Tiger's Lust, allowing you to quickly remove snares and roots from your teammates. Of course, you will also be using Tiger's Lust on yourself, in which case you can make the following macro to always cast it on your character. Arena 1-2-3 macros are commonly used with CC effects by many top level players, once again allowing you to instantly use an ability on a specific opponent no matter who you are currently targeting. Grapple Weapon and Paralysis can both be bound into Arena 1-3 macros using the commands we have listed here. As we mentioned in our talent section, you will sometimes swap between Healing Elixir and Diffuse Magic in Arena. In order to save space on your action bar, you can make the following macro to use whatever ability you have talented for your 5th tier. And finally, you should consider making the following macro in order to taunt hunter pets in arena. This is really disruptive from the hunter's perspective since it can completely throw off their damage by redirecting their pet to attack you. And there you have the introduction to our Miss Weaver course for Season 2. If you're interested in seeing more, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, where we will be updating all of our content for patch 9.1. You can gain access to the rest of our Miss Weaver course as well as our exclusive arena commentaries which take you into the minds of the best players in the world. Monks are definitely looking stronger this patch and we will continue to keep you updated on all developments in 9.1. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon!